we're expecting a frost here tonight so I'm just showing you the plant cover that I've constructed this is my little poor man's greenhouse which is just a storm water pipe I've got some supports for the plastic on this side hopefully that will keep the frost off my tomato plants and up on the garage wall where I've um, put the um, the NFT system you can see the frost cover that I've got for my uh, the one little cherry tomato that's that's in here and the two um, the two, ch two chili plants that I've put in here I thought it was quite a novel way of protecting them from frost <laughs> we'll see how it goes these are the uh, the new plants that I put in they're doing pretty good this is one of the old plants that I put in that was suffering from the nitrogen deficiency. Um, since I've got some uh, some calcium ammonium nitrate, that seems to have kicked them on. That one looks a lot better. Um, the other one up here, this one has got some green foliage on top and it might actually be recovering. I'll give them another couple of days to see how they go. It's another one by one of the plants that was um, suffering from the nitrogen deficiency. Um, it doesn't look real healthy down the bottom, but the top seems to be picking up. So, like, I'm going to give it a while longer. We'll see how they go. Uh, middle of next week, I might decide on whether I'm going to replace them or not. This is a cherry tomato in the Dutch bucket. Compared to the cherry tomatoes that are in the Koya, this one is completely hopeless. But that could be because of the, the nutrients. I mean, the, there was that nutrient deficiency with nitrogen in the Dutch bucket. So, like, I'm going to give it quite a bit longer, this one, to see whether it catches up to the, the ones that are in the coir buckets, which have had the hand attention. If you, if, uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on here, this is a um, cherry tomato that I've had in this, in the Dutch bucket for about two weeks now. And that compared to these ones down here which are much less yellowed off and they're sitting in straight um, coir. They haven't had any nitrogen added to them at all and they're much darker green even though they got frostbitten. This one on the end is probably the, the best one to look at. It's got, it, it actually looks quite healthy compared to the, the other ones because it got the least frostbite. That's the rain barrel that I'm putting in for this system to catch the, uh, the water that comes down off the garage out of that down pot there. Um, we have absolutely terrible tap water here full of carbonates. So I've got two rain barrels going, that's one of them. Um, it hasn't been hooked into the, the, um, the down pot yet and I'll, when I hook it in I've got a new system for doing that so I'll show you that. This rain barrel is currently hooked in, that's the diverter there. Um, it goes into a, a bucket which you've all seen before, which has got the, the big um, scourer filter in it. The water comes out the overflow pipe and then it gets further filtered by that piece of um, insect screen on top. Um, I've got this barrel mounted up on, on milk crates so I can fit a bucket underneath of it. Um, that's the diverter there, how it comes out of the down pipe. I haven't sealed it up at the bottom, haven't bothered.